Welcome back, folks. My next guest is a billionaire philanthropist and the former mayor of New York City. Hide your 20 out sodas and give a big welcome to Michael Bloomberg. And uh, nice to see you. Do you still like uh, the Mr. Mayor? Do you get that for the rest of your life? Is that like uh, Mr. My President? My kids don't quite call me that, but that's okay. Your kids don't? Okay. Your Excellency, Your Honor? Uh, I told my grandson he can call me Sir. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Sir Michael, uh, you're founder, uh, obviously, of the Bloomberg uh, LP and Bloomberg Philanthropies, former mayor of New York, 10th richest man in the world, estimated worth $47 billion. But who, sir, is this guy. If I had to guess, that was about five years after puberty. <laughs> is puberty different for future billionaires, or is it just as rough? Uh, it's been a long time. <laughs> um, now, we'll skip over that then. Um, the 2016 election, there was a lot of talk, uh, a lot of rumors, that you were thinking about running. Were you seriously, seriously considering Yeah. That? Okay. Sure. You evidently did not see a path to victory. That just the... Well, my advisors told me that a New York billionaire who's changed parties a number of times couldn't be elected. <laughs> so I fired them. Uh, do you have any regrets? Because, uh, you know, people said that about Trump, as you just uh, alluded to. Do you have any regrets that you didn't run? No, I never look back. Is it okay if we have regrets that you didn't run? <laughs> yeah. My peeps. <laughs> Your peeps? Your peeps are in the his house, right. is what you're saying? Right here. Uh, now, you have a, a, a new book here yes. uh, that you wrote with Carl Pope former president of the Sierra Club, and it is called Climate of Hope. Where is the climate of hope, and, and what is it? Where is the hope? Well, the hope is here. Um, we can make a difference. Uh, it's something we really should worry about. You mean and climate change? Climate change, and whether or not it happens, nobody knows, but you should take an insurance policy out. And if it looks like it might do damage, now's the time to take steps and take a look. The oceans are warming and rising, and you see these terrible storms that have killed a lot of people and done enormous damage in Florida and Texas and Puerto Rico and the Caribbean. And with warmer oceans, you're going to get more of those. Now, uh, many of the people who uh, deny global warming say that it's some sort of hoax or a money-making scheme. From a businessman's point of view, why should a businessman believe in global warming? Well, it doesn't matter. There's a risk and a business person would take appropriate uh, protections. Uh, you don't think you're going to die, but you still buy a life insurance policy. Mm -hmm. And uh, businesses have to worry about if they got flooded out, how they would continue their business, how their employees could get to work or get home or worry about their families and that sort of thing. So it's a very serious thing. And the science says that uh, things are getting warmer and they will continue to get warmer unless we reduce the amount of greenhouse gases. And so the federal government's decided to do nothing. But uh, the citizens, uh, whether they are companies or individuals or local governments, have said, okay, we're going to take it in our own hands and we're going to cut our greenhouse gases. And America has actually been leading the way. We've, cut, we've closed half of all our coal-fired power plants in the last few years. Done with the Sierra Club, which is an organization that went out and picketed and convinced uh, people to, uh, 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 power plants to convert to natural gas, which is much, or re renewables. Uh, and uh, we are going to meet our uh, goals that we agreed to in Paris, even without the federal government. And we only have to hope we're it. While no one, while no one can say for certain uh, what creates uh, a hurricane, there, it's too complex of a system. There is a fair amount of consensus that uh, storms are intensifying because there is more energy in the system. Correct. The oceans are warmer, which feeds these storms. Yes. Um, there's been criticism for a, a, a slow and adequate response to what's happened in Puerto Rico. I know you went down to the Virgin Islands after Irma went through there. Is it up to the 
private sector to, to help with our natural disasters now that the government is um, well, uh, slow to it, respond? I wouldn't say it's up to us. I think the gov governments are big and it takes them a while to get on the scene and start helping people. In the meantime, the private sector can do things very quickly because they don't have all the bureaucracy. And I think it's, we have an obligation as fellow human beings, and particularly uh, if it's in the American Virgin Islands or Puerto Rico American territories or in uh, Texas or Miami or wherever, to come to each other's aid. And if you remember 9-11 when we had that uh, 3,000 people killed and two big buildings come down, and potential to destroy our economy, the country, in fact the world as well, came to New York's aid. And I think uh, you've seen some of the New York, the governor sent down National Guard troops to, down to help in Puerto Rico. I took down some medicines, which Johns Hopkins donated to St. John and St. Thomas. We have a bunch of people who worked for us in Hurricane Sandy, which we put on a plane and flew them down right away. One of my partners has a house down there, so on the ground we knew what was going on. And we can help, and then after a while the federal government comes in and takes over the big cleanup job. Well, the new book is called Climate of Hope. It's out now. The man is Michael Bloomberg, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll be right back with Tim and Aaron.